Hi, Rich. Today we looked at a number of figures in your foxtrot. We talked about the outside swivel and also looked at the group coming up to it. So your open telemark, the open natural turn and the outside swivel turning, followed by the feather ending. And made a point to remember that that is the feather ending exactly like we've been working on in the impetus turn following the wave. So we'll talk about that. I'll also do a, a video on the hover cross and also on the natural telemark. So we'll take that in pieces. So the first thing that I noticed today is that for the grouping we're doing, your telemark was a little overturned. So sometimes we'll refer to these different telemarks in my training on the technique. We called it the papa, the mama, and the baby, or the grandpa, the father, and so on, because depending on how much turn you make, you get a bigger telemark. And the reason for that is what figure are you planning to follow it with? So if we would turn further to the left and we want to do a natural turn, then we're going to get a lot of disturbance in the body. So for instance, we didn't talk about this today, but if I wanted to do the open telemark to the wing, then the position of my third step and the amount of turn that I would make would be greater than where I'm going to be to follow the open telemark with an open natural turn. So three different examples might be the open telemark followed by the wing, which is a left turning figure, or the open telemark followed by the feather ending, maybe a more neutral feeling, and the open telemark followed by the natural turn, where we need the least amount of turn so that our turn to the right is not wobbly, and that would be your baby telemark. So we're truly following the alignments that are written in the charts. We're coming, I think we're in the, the short wall. And correct me if I'm not sure. I'll try my best in this little space. But we are dancing from, say if this was diagonal center, coming out to facing diagonal wall against the line of dance. And we talked about the alignments last week when we were doing the line of dance and then against the line of dance if I'm moving this way or backing the line of dance and our diagonal. So when I'm facing in the line of dance, diagonal wall and diagonal center. This is now against, okay, so that's diagonal wall against the line of dance. So when I dance the telemark, my step out at the end, my third step is more sideways and my, my center is diagonal wall against the line of dance. It's very easy to overturn the telemark and end up going this way, but now you need to go back that way for the natural. So we're going to use just a quarter of a turn here between one and two, and there's only another quarter of a turn between two and three. Now, that being said, I will have my face turned a little bit more to the left in the normal position, so I don't want to be looking straight into that direction. The problem is you've got to watch again that we've been talking a lot about how the body coils in different directions. You don't want the body here to follow the head in that turn. You want the body and the head to be working in an opposite direction. So that's the first thing. So that's where you would begin your natural turn rather than here. The next thing, this goes back to the video we did a while ago in promenade. I think we were working on the wing. And when I was watching you even practicing alone, you should be in a position in promenade where your center is facing your girl. And of course, you are looking where you're going to go. So again, your head and spine are not neutral. There's a rotation to the right and a rotation to the left. So all your promenade positions, you don't want to come out like that. So naturally, when we exit, from the telemark, we want to maintain this position. So we have that step going forward and across, and you notice that my body is once again in the twist. Anytime that we have our limbs working in opposition, we have more length and we have to stretch the spiral line. So that requires a, an effort and a feeling of coiling because the natural thing we do is to go square. So I'm coming out 
looking where I'm going, but my center is facing my girl. And now you're going to keep that hip back and keep that shoulder back so that you can step forward and across into your natural turn. So I'm going to be stepping towards the wall, swiveling to backing the line of dance and then continuing on to backing diagonal wall. That was another problem. Sometimes I was watching you get flat and going straight down the line of dance also with the shoulder weight back. So we're going to allow that eighth of a turn to happen there. I'm really keeping my weight forward over my left toe. I shouldn't say toe, ball of foot, but we're on the toes and allowing the shoulder lead to take place. If I move my weight flat or heavy with my shoulders through that foot, I cannot accomplish the shoulder lead, which is my lead for the lady to step outside and also preparing you now to continue into your outside swivel. The last thing we noticed that we have to correct was that it's correct that this foot is back in CDMP. We're commencing our turn, but you are actually stepping across. Now, it's true one of the things we sometimes think of whenever we take a foot forward or back in CVMP. I'm thinking dynamically that my foot is under the opposite shoulder blade. That keeps my, my movement clean and elegant. But if I literally put it to the other side of my body, I will be across. So the feet are not that, that far over, but I, do, I feel this because I'm trying to engage, again, the opposite side of my back to the moving leg. I'm trying to feel that connection. So that's a good exercise you can do outside of your figures, is to do this. More particularly for your backward movement, because we're not accustomed to doing that. Getting the CBM to create the swing of the leg backward, you can do that on, on both sides. When you do that again, you will feel that spiral line is extended and lengthened across the body. So when I go back there, I've already achieved part of my turn by having the shoulder lead. In this case, because of where we're coming out, we're actually coming out diagonal wall, the new line of dance, we're going to turn a quarter of a turn to the right on the swivel. So I will achieve a lot of that through my standing leg so that by the time I arrive, it's quite simple to, to finish by just allowing this leg to be flexible. Now, you don't want the leg to swing open. You want to keep the legs together in a spiral position. We want the toe on the floor. Also, we don't want an ugly line with the heel in this position. But there has to be some movement in the leg. So if I'm trying to turn a quarter of a turn and I leave my leg there, I'll have some problems. So that's where we're going to end up and then come out with the feather ending. So I noticed the, the same error taking place here that we worked on in your feather ending. And that was when you finished your swivel that you came out square. And in doing that, you also dropped the right side. So again, we have to maintain this, this coil that we have. Now the other thing that happens, I have to increase again the pull of my head away from my shoulder to keep my shape. Because if we don't lengthen the spiral muscles when we rotate, the head will go with the turn, which is a more natural thing to do. If someone calls your name, you look, you turn your shoulders, follow your head. So you turn your shoulders and your head goes too. So we're working our shoulder line against our head. So we're not letting it all straighten out at that point. So you will feel, once again, since you're all spiraled up, you will feel a lot of length or engagement of the muscles here. And I will feel that I have to do that in order to keep the neckline straight, otherwise my head can drop in, which is another problem. And a little bit of that was happening as you were stepping out because of the side dropping, the head was dropping. So keep that pull, keep that shape, 
and now the sway begins on the quicks. So be careful again, dropping there. Keep the right side long, then go into your right sway. So those are most of the points that we covered on this grouping. And this group in particular is in your technique book, so we'll go over some of the points there for reference so you can understand them a little bit better.